Ladies and gentlemen, it is the end of the regular season, and it is time to talk about the awards. It's award season. Woo! Yes, 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 yes. Nevertheless, man, we got some awards to talk about. We got MVP. We got six man of the year. We got DPOY. We got MIP, rookie of the year, and coach of the year. I don't know if I already said that. Let's start off with coach of the year. Which coach impressed you the most, Age? Darvin Ham. Um, <laughs> oh, ah. Coach of the year. This isn't going to just the guy with the highest record. This is going to a guy that either A, overachieved, or B, when I put my eyes on the screen and it's a big game, these coaches step up. So for me, my my nominees are A, Mark Dagnall, da Dragon Ball, I don't know, that guy, Mark. B, this is going to go to Mike Malone. And C, we're going to have Jamal Mosley. No, we didn't Google these names. Totally knew them off the dome. And shout out to the Minnesota Timberwolves as well. For me personally, I'm going to say of the three, I'm actually going to go to the one that I could name off rip totally and we can name all three i'm gonna go with mike malone because i've seen mike malone time in and time out when it's a big game that boy shows up that boy makes adjustments i've seen even against my own lakers man it will feel like okay it's a nice tonight we finally go and get him and then out the gate yakub 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 whole different plays schematic changes lineup change and next thing you know this team is on fire but if you think that's just laker brain anytime i think the denver nuggets are in a major game they step up repetitively that has to do something with the coach i think you can also go orlando here because the overachievement of L in Orlando. We are glossing over that now, but I'm honestly saying Mike Malone should have this. Coach of the Year is one of the most interesting awards to me because I truly believe it's one of the few awards where we actually do care about what you did in the past. It's not just what are you doing in this 82 game regular season. And with that being said, I'm going to go with Mark Dagnall for my coach of the year. I want to shout out again, Mike Malone. I want to shout out Chris Finch from Minnesota. But with OKC, it's just, I expected them to make a leap, right? We, we we saw the pieces that they had last season. I believe they were a play-in team last season. Okay, they made it to the play-in. They, they should make the jump from that to a 5-6 seed. But for this team, and let me check, they are the number one team in the tough Western Conference. But they are on pace to win 57-58 games with a squad that is not as experienced as they could be. For him to coach SGA up to an MVP caliber player, for some of y'all, the actual MVP, it's, it's just tremendous what I'm seeing from OKC. They are way ahead of the curve, and I cannot say that their coaching has nothing to do with that. It actually has a lot to do with that. So go OKC. Not, not bad pick at all, gang. No cap. Next up, controversial one over the last couple of weeks. We're going to go to the Defensive Player of the Year. I'll start this one off. My big three is Rudy Gobert, Victor Wembanyama, and Anthony Demodome Davis. Yes, sir. Those are my big three. Now, this is going to sound Mickey as shit. <laughs> but Vic, you can't have it this year, man. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. And, and, and it's gonna be it's gonna be salty as shit because I just know you about to rack him up for the rest of your career. Let <laughs> let everyone else get some. Let's give it to Rudy Gobert, the anchor of I believe they're still number one, the number one defensive team in the league from a defensive rating perspective. He is having a really good defensive season. He's giving you 13 boards. He's giving you two blocks. And I don't even think that does his defense justice because like Victor Wembanyama, like Rudy Gobert defensively is one of those dudes. You see Rudy Gobert in the paint? Uh, pass out. <laughs> you see Rudy Gobert in the paint? Uh, pump fake. I gotta... Uh, what, do, what, do, what do I do? What do I do? Now, there are, you know, there are ways you can exploit a Rudy Gobert, but I also think that depends on that same team not having great POA defenders, but this team, they got some good POA defenders. So on a team where you can't really exploit Rudy Gobert like that, and just statistically speaking as well, and with the eye test, you know, number one defense in the league, I'm gonna give the S Rudy Gobert, but um, shout out to Vic, because <laughs> that guy's good. That guy from an individual defensive player perspective, fucking team shit. Ooh, you 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 swap Rudy right now with Vic. <laughs> that guy's good. That guy's good. And that's why you're a fool. Vic is the DPOI. Vic has nobody around him, man. Vic, Vic, Vic ain't got no J Mac over there. Vic ain't got no he old. He ain't got no Conley over there. Even though I don't even think Conley played this year, but I'm a gender pushing. He ain't got, he ain't got nothing over there, man. That boy is. They ain't got no Nas Reed. Vic is out there with me, you, and Sochin, and he's out there looking like. Timothy the fifth on DP on on the defensive side of the ball. Now, obviously, Gogurt might be having his best defensive season yet, and he still ain't better than Wimpy. <laughs> Fuck him. 
<laughs> how about how about that? It's like, nah, they ain't really fuck Rudy Gobert. He has enough hate in this world. All troll aside, it's responsible to pick Rudy Gobert, but I must agenda push. I'm giving this jump to Vic, but shout out to Bam Adebayo and Anthony Davis, who I literally flip flop on as that third spot. Bro, their defensive rating when Vic is on the floor is a 114. When he's off, it goes to 121.7. <laughs> so Bro. they get eight. They they didn't even get eight points for us when Vic is off the court. Let me let me let me check. Uh, hold on, let me check Minnesota. I'm pushing agendas, man. I think I think it's Vic, but he didn't have um the the team is just he ain't gonna look like it all the time. He has to do everything. Yeah, Rudy Rudy Gobert. Yeah, when it, when they're off the court, hey, I I do think it's a matter of a uh, just the the Timberwolves are more talented. So when he's off the court, there's more defensive talent on the court. When Rudy's off the court, but man, I got Vic is good, man. Just listen, you see a rookie year, give give some awards to other people. All right, let let Luca get an MVP. You know what I'm saying? Assert your dominance, asserting dominance now. Victor Wembanyama, DPOY. Am I 100 percent trolling? No. Am I zero percent trolling? I wouldn't say no to that either. <laughs> I wouldn't say I wouldn't say yes to that either. A little bit. Next up, let's talk about the most improved player. Who improved the most in 2024? I haven't even thought about this. I have a couple names in mind. Um, I want to shout out Tyrese Maxey. I want to shout out Kobe White. And for my third guy, I haven't really thought that deep. Hold on, let me check. <laughs> Jalen Brunson. How much did Jalen Brunson improve? For real, for real. Hold on. Oh my god. All right, so most improved player. I haven't even thought about this for the entire year, but now that I think about it, it Tyrese Maxey, obviously not Halley. Halley's, you know, he's good, but same guy. Uh, uh, Tyrese Maxey for sure. Bulls fans going to say Kobe White. I didn't watch Kobe White. There, there's that. Uh, um, Jonathan Kaminga is up there as well. I know the Warriors fans going to want to hear that name, but me personally, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to take a little sleeper pick, a little weird pick. I'm going to go with Jalen Williams. I think Jalen Williams underrated in terms of improvement, not in terms of talent. I think we all thought he was talented. But in terms of his improvement, higher volume and efficiency, and the efficiency growth is damning. Like, I don't know if he's an okay shooter or a great shooter now. He went from 35% from three to 43% from three. Uh, the points went up, I think, a whole five. Um, assist went up as well. I think the only thing that declined is his 1.4 to 1.1 steals. Uh, he just looks like a more, more poised player. Even I test he passes. Looking like sometimes the second best player on the team, even though I definitely would say Chet. But sometimes he looked like the damn number two i got Jalen williams not by a landslide because i do think kaminga given his opportunity has flourished but i wouldn't say more than Jalen williams this season in terms of improvement i think kaminga just never had an opportunity i like j-dub as well the only reason i'm not going with them is for the most improved and technically if you just want to go from year one to year two right like j-dub is in that conversation but this might just be like a sophomore jump for a sophomore player that like natural development so i'm, I'm gonna knock him a little bit for that i'm gonna go with either Kobe White or Tyrese Maxey. I was very big on Tyrese Maxey early in the season. Now he did slow down, and I do think a big part of that is Joel Embiid being out. So now you got this, you know, player now. Now he has to carry the load all of a sudden from being a third option last year to a first option this year. Like that's a crazy jump. Mid season two. But Kobe White, Kobe White going from 10 points a game last season, uh, off the bench for the Chicago Bulls, going up to 19. Uh, five and five on 44, 38, 84 splits to me is extremely impressive. And also when it comes to the conversation about the Chicago Bulls blowing up, I do think if there is one dude they shouldn't give away because he could be a really big part of that next generation of Bulls basketball. I do think Kobe White has proven that, yo, hey, if y'all want to blow it up, let's go into rebuild mode. I'm 19, five and five. I am still only 24 years old. I am still young. I can be a part of this, this, this team in the future. So I'm personally going to go Kobe White, but shout out to Tyrese Maxey though, because Tyrese going from twenty to twenty six. That's a that's a really really big improvement as well. Trade Kobe while the stock is high. This is your warning, Bulls fans. Before we move on with the rest of the video, I just want to shout out these proud sponsors of this video, Prize Picks, our personal favorite way to play daily fantasy sports. And we will show you how to play this game real quick because it's honestly really simple. All you got to do is sign up for an account, download their app, or go on their website. They got a bunch of different sports up top as well, but we're going to stick with the NBA because we love basketball on this channel. This is a basketball channel. And Sage is going to help me make some picks. We got the New York Knicks facing the Los Angeles Lakers today. Do you think Jimmy Butler is about to go off on the Knicks? Yeah, Jim, Jimbo getting 20, 21, Jimbo getting more than 20 all day, every day. Lock in Jimbo against New York. He, that's grit and grind versus grit and grind. Jimmy got that. And while you're at it, I see Giannis against Washington. <laughs> just, just, 
Whatever, whatever category you want. P.R.A. Give me all of them. He getting more than that. Washington. Ooh. 55 and a half is crazy. But if he hits it, Washington, what's going on? We'll do the more on Jimmy's points, the more on Giannis's P.R.A. We're going to put a calm $15 on this entry. Click place entry. And boom, that is how you make an entry on prize picks. And if you use code SNS like how Bezos could have just now, that deposit will be matched up to 100%, meaning it will play as $30 on your entry for a first time entry. First time, one time. Links to everything will be in the description down below. And shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring this video. Next up, let's talk about the guys off the bench, man. We always want to talk about the stars. We always want to talk about the starters. But who came off the bench this year and really made an impact for their team? I'll be honest. It's the word I think about the least. Uh, but here we go. Six men of the year. Got some names. And there's also sometimes like who qualifies considering rotations change during the season. So so like at some point you're like well, AR. But then it's like uh, AR definitely starts. So uh, for me, in terms of like best player, I would say maybe like a Nas or something like that. But in terms of just who's open. There's a lot of great bench players, man. Shout, yeah, shout out to the 2020s for having, you know, insane depth pause if needed. You know, he ain't the most efficient guy, but Tim Hardaway is on the bench now. Uh, um, yeah, you know, he's not going to win the statistical conversation, but shout out to Tim Hardaway. However, I'm going to go with the boy in Atlanta, man. I'm going to go with Boggy. I ain't going to lie. He's 17 off the bench. Hell, we've seen what he's doing when fucking Trey Young is out. And I ain't gonna lie, he's the reason he's a huge part as to why they actually got past Boston the other day. I'm gonna go ahead and say Bogdanovich. Um, there's a lot of picks here though. The, the NBA is, you know, deep as hell. Yeah, Bogey's a good pick. I've seen him live, and I've also seen him twice in a week. And he cooked all three times, bro. Like, I feel like he's one of those dudes that like if he was on a contender, he'd be a really, really good piece. So, shout out to Bogey. I also want to shout out Tim Hardaway Jr. Nas Reed is another good pick. I want to shout out Malik Monk, too, because Malik Monk, 72 games off the bench, 15 points for the Sacramento Kings. I would argue he's their best, uh, second best perimeter threat next to the Aaron. I am probably going to go... He might just win the numbers for a second. It might be Bogey for real. <laughs> I, go, I go lie. I might, I might go Bogey, man. Yeah, se 17 points off the bench on 43, 38, 90. Like, are their bench players more impactful to better winning teams? Absolutely. You know, the, all, all the names that I mentioned, I think got that in their bag. But in terms of a team that relies on their bench player, a, a bench player, as much as the Hawks rely on Bogey, especially with Trey Young out being out, uh, with Trey Young being out for a, a big portion of of the season i do think when it comes to value per team bogey might be the most valuable one so i'm gonna go bogey on this one i'm gonna agree with you bogey boggy donovich six man of the year congratulations so um we forgot to do rookie of the year Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> fuck it's wemby all right you say, oh, my, oh my bad we, we it was uh, it was such a back end thought uh, duds wemby shout out to uh Wimby. <laughs> um, no but, but Chet's more efficient. Oh, uh, but if you want to go by success, Hami Hockett. <laughs> <laughs> the Thunder got some rookies. Uh, Walker. Oh, man. I, I know, bro. No, I'm sorry. It's Wimby. It's not even close. Wimby's having an all-time rookie. There's some people that will argue that he's the greatest rookie of all time. And while I probably won't go there, wrong, especially if you're done with the 90s. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. Next up, we got some Souls and Sage original awards to go through. We'll save the finale for last, all right? I know y'all want to care about the MVP so much. Oh my god, just get to the fucking content! <laughs> But yeah, let's start off with the first SNS Original Player Award. The funniest player of the year. A lot of funny guys in the league, man. Who is the funniest one? Ooh, there's, there's some nominees, man. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, he ain't a player, but Darvin Ham gotta be in my list. <laughs> that nigga funny. <laughs> That nigga is funny. You look, Scotty Barnes obviously got to be in there. <laughs> he ain't even do shit, bro. That's the thing about Scotty, bro. He ain't even do shit. Y'all be dick sucking Scotty, bro. Scotty Barnes is hilarious. Uh, Draymond. <laughs> I got him. There are several choices. I'm going to go with Scotty Barnes, though. As you can see, I started laughing when I said his fucking name. Hey, my bad, bro. You really ain't do nothing, but you're funny as hell, bro. This might be hella recency bias, bro. And it, I know it's just one moment, but when Kelly Oubre at the end of the game pointed at three refs, you a bitch, you a bitch, and you a bitch. That shit was so funny, bro. 
<laughs> oh my god as far as a singular player scotty gotta be the runaway but it, it, it ain't even his fault bro like damn y'all be on his penis it's not man last year's would have been dylan brooks by the way chat last year dylan brooks what generational run <laughs> that nigga was funny but now they gotta go scotty next up the 2024 crash out player of the year award which nba player crashed out too much this year and i'm gonna be honest sage there is a unanimous there should be a unanimous crash out player of the year i wonder who's gonna win this award let's just name the other guys in contention because i wonder who's gonna win this um i'll start off with um rudy gobert unironically rudy gobert is in the crash out list you could argue yusuf nurkic in the interviews he started <laughs> you could argue yusuf nurkic is a crash out but um i'm not gonna lie if you didn't get the gist he's involved of two of the nominees even draymond and slide wins this year i can't even begin to fathom other people winning this award draymond green man generational crash out the highlights of draymond green are low-key some of the funniest highlights i've ever seen in my life that one play where he's on the ground and he runs full court and tackles, <laughs> and tackles the guy I i've never seen something that fucking funny i'm like what are you doing then he punches somebody in the face yo draymond runs away with this award uh i don't already mentioned him but kelly Oubre in <laughs> that moment is a crash out moment i will say that and one person that i felt like should have crashed out this year is Cade Cunningham. Oh my. Yo, there were some of them losses. It looked like the joy was taken out of him. He should he should have cussed out someone on live TV for real, for real, bro. That was with so many games chat. It became must-watch basketball by the end of it. That's how bad the Detroit Pistons were losing and still are losing this year. Closing off the season with 13 fucking wins. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's Draymond, big Draymond, the biggest Draymond, Draymond Green podcast, crash out player of the year, unanimous. Steph, you're not alone. You got a, another unanimous guy on that team. Next up, the most disappointing player of the year award. Not everyone can be good. Not everyone can be great. But who disappointed the most? In terms of who disappointed me this year, man. Ah, big Z, the biggest Z. L meet, you know, I, I thought he was going to have a resurgent year this season. Maybe we can revisit the who should have New Orleans drafted, Ja or Zion takes. We're getting there, though. <laughs> we'll say we're we're getting there. But um, Big Z was a disappointment for the first half of the season. Definitely turning it up for the second half. I'm going to say this, a, a, a team that did disappoint me, the Miami Heat. I thought they were going to build off of what they had last season and be more stable in the regular season. But fighting in the playing tournament again is kind of crazy. Another player. Gabe Vincent. <laughs> Speaking of another Miami Heat player. Gabriel Vincent. My goodness. He's just starting to play, y'all. This is Chris Dunn 2.0, bro. Like, what is going on in L.A.? There might be a backup point guard curse in L.A. As far as my winner for most disappointing player of the year, uh, I didn't want to say because I wanted to save him for last. It is Jordan Ramon Poole. I, I don't know his middle name. I just made that up. <laughs> I just made that up. All right. Um... Listen, it sounds crazy now, but I thought it was going to be another James Harden situation. You know, a guy on a winning team not getting the touches that he deserves because there's a guy or a couple guys that truly do deserve the touches that they got. You're not about to get more touches than Steph Curry. I'm sorry, you know, but go on a, on a rebuilding team looking for their franchise cornerstone. You can cook up for real. You're a guy who succeeds with the ball in your hand. You go to Washington. Who else are they going to give the ball to? Kyle Kuzma, and they ended up giving the ball to Kyle Kuzma because Jordan Poole was that trash. How are you statistically worse this year than last season, bro? What is going on? To just remind people, last year with Golden State, Jordan Poole was a 20-point per game scorer, giving you four and a half assists a game, 43, 34, 87% from the field. That efficiency wasn't even that good already, okay? His, his, the season prior, he was more effective, in my opinion. But for that to go down on a team where you're starting more games, and for your minutes to go down as well because you're not playing that good, going from 20 20 to 17, 43 to 41, 34 to 32. You're still a good free throw shooter. Jordan Poole, what are we doing, man? The Filipinos really counted on you to, to, to tee up, man. You disappointed us. 
Look, I feel like there's a tier that endless people are going to have in the comments section of players like Damian Lillard and Bradley Beal, players who are that caliber. And it was like, dang, bro, what the fuck? Or young players that you thought would ascend to even further beyond. And they were just cool. And granted, it's not his fault, but like Tyrese Halliburton. To be honest, this season has had generational disappointments. None of them can qualify. And I got three names for you. Coming in third place for me, Ben Simmons. Look, dog. Look, man. Y'all told me. Y'all told me. And Souls, you were one of those guys, low key. That yo, Ben. I'm just saying, Ben might turn around this year. Womp, womp. Not at all. Not even close. I don't even know how many games he played, but I'm betting the under on 20. Ben Simmons, welcome to the club, bro. Number two, I'm mad that you went first, Gabe Vincent. I know why he's talking about this, and it, it, it pisses me off. This man, Gabe Vincent, not only didn't play, but when he was playing, it was like, the fuck your shot go? He's pulling the Malik Beasley from a couple of years ago or last year. I forgot, but what the hell? But number one, it's not complicated, dog. Be simple, stupid. There's a lemon on the ground. I'm not expecting orange juice. It's Jordan Poole. I was one of those people that said, I can't wait for Jordan Poole to drop the most inefficient 30 you've ever seen. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that's what it would be. And it's somehow way worse. Jordan Poole, most disappointing thing. And if it wasn't even for the overall season, hey, Ruby was in D.C., bro. I'll never forgive you for that, dog. She ain't never coming back now, bro. Why? Why you do that, bro? You fucked it up for Sage. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. Hey, look, I ain't had a hug since second grade, but Ruby can give me uppies. <laughs> w callback. Watch the like Mike video. And last but not least, for you casuals, I want to make y'all wait. The MVP award. <laughs> Making me wait. I skipped to this part of the video. This is the only thing I care about. The most valuable player of the year in 2024. I think this is going to go down as one of the greatest races of all time. One of the the races where there truly are a lot of candidates. There's not really a, at least for the majority consensus of the conversations, there's not a runaway candidate. It's not a 2016 type of race. And it's not even like a 2017 where it's just a two-man race. There's, I swear to God, like the race has changed a lot throughout the regular season. Especially because Joel B went out too. Who is your enemy? MVP, Sage. Who's your top three? Uh, all right. Well, top three, honorable mention to a name that he ain't in the conversation. But, hey, I just want to shout him out. Yo, AD was hooping this year. Shout, shout out, out AD. Get it. Get it. Shout out Anthony Davis. But we gotten into the top three. One of the four got to be snubbed. Y'all know who the four are. I'm, you're going to hear that reveal last. Coming in at number three, I'm going to go Giannis. Mm. I'm going to go Giannis, man. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, fantastic offensive player in the regular season, let alone in the postseason. He's done it before. He's even got a championship, so we know the game translates. Fantastic uh, defensive season. Some would even argue DPOY. I don't think he's winning. If you want to do the end the conversation goalpost, to be honest, nah. But but he's he's fantastic on defense. He certainly will make an all NBA team, all, all NBA defensive team. Second place, he gonna fuck us up. But Nikola Jokic is too. Nikola Nikola Jokic mm. gotta go to two. He gotta go to two, man. It's a combination of just oh, one vote of fatigue. Fuck him. But two, most importantly, all shit aside, man, I just think there's just been someone else that's just more impressive somehow, some way. Coming in at number one, I have the Luka Don Doncic. It's never in doubt, bro. Look, y'all can't tell me. Because uh, uh, my, my argument for Luca, outside of 100% pure blind bias, and trust me, pure blind bias. I was saying Luca if he was the ninth seed. But seriously, he said, what, the fifth seed right now? Yeah. At this point, seriously. And I, I seriously ask you, what more would Luca have to do? Like, dead ass. What, what more? And if Souls disagrees, I guess we'll hear. But what more? Any person that's like, oh, you're bugging, you're biased, or whatever. And I am. But on this mode, I'm genuinely serious. What more will Luke have to do? The the guy is averaging 34 points, leading the league in scoring because of Joel Embiid going down. Fair enough. But 34 points, nine rebounds, nine assists on 48, 38 on 10 attempts. Bro, what the fuck else you want him to do? You can't act like he got a super team. He don't. He got Kyrie. Kyrie's a bucket. But super team, not even close. So it's not like he has all of that. He got he acquired his team later in the season. If you really want to hinder why he didn't win all the games for majority of the season, he got the most impactful players on his team in the second half of the season. And let alone what 
play, players on his team not healthy for the majority of the season. So either way, no matter what you want to do, I don't see the argument outside of literally, I was 10 toes on Luka at the deadline. I was 10 toes on Luka not winning at three quarters into the season, and I just don't want to change my mind. That's literally what I think it is, because what more would Luka have to do? Yeah, I will say at this point, it changes for me every day, man. It's it's got it's gotten to that point. I, I think a couple weeks ago I had a clear one, I had a clear two, but Luca has just been every single week more undeniable. Like you said, bro. I, I get it. What more can you ask for? He's putting up a 34-point triple-double efficiency as well. And they're winning. It's not, not a top seed, but they are winning. And they are not a play-in team. They are a playoff team. Pretty comfortably, too. So, I don't want to come out of this and discredit Luka's season. Because I even was talking about this yesterday, man. Like, yo, 2019 Harden? He didn't win MVP. But, like, holy shit, bro. That motherfucker was averaging 36 points a game. 36 points a game. What the fuck, bro? I think it's one of those seasons that, to be honest with you, does not need an MVP award to justify how great it was. I think it is going to look, we're, we're going to look back at this season the same way we did with 2019 Harden, the same way we did with 2006 Kobe and say, yo, we do not need an MVP to justify the greatness of the season. And when it comes to the MVP award, it also, I think, depends on what you value. Like if you're a, if you're a guy who really values winning, really, really values winning, <laughs> Jason Tatum is your MVP. If you're a guy who values Two-way dominance, Giannis would probably be your MVP. If you're a guy who values numbers, Luka is your MVP. If you're a guy who values improvement from last year to this year, SGA would probably be your MVP. But I think there's just this one candidate that just, you know, it just checks off a lot of those boxes. He's in the Goldilocks zone when it comes to this conversation. Um, And that is one Nikola Jokic. Um, This is not his best season. Um. Uh, that that's kind of I never got that argument when it came to the MVP award. If if your fourth best season personally is still the best season in the league, why are you getting penalized with this award? I don't I never got that. Not saying that this is the case for this MVP award because it's definitely debatable. But we are gonna end the year with Nikola Jokic playing seventy to seventy five games. He's putting up 26 points a game. That is a really good volume. 58% from the field, 35% from three, 82% from the line. He's giving you 12 rebounds. He's one of the best rebounders in the league. He's one of the best passers of all time. And statistically speaking, he has proven it, giving you nine assists and 2.9 turnovers a game. Um, Again, Luka's numbers are Luka's numbers, but I just can't scoff at this one candidate who is giving you a 26 point, like Luka's giving you a 34 point triple double. Fine. Like, that's crazy impressive. But there's this other dude as well who's giving you a 26-point triple-double and is just winning more games. And he is a big part of that, too. It's not on some... I understand Denver has a great system. They got a great track track record and all of that. Nikola Jokic is extremely integral to that team's success as well. I would go Nikola Jokic, but I could wake up tomorrow because... It's also what what does Luca have to do to win this shit too? So I I get it. I'm not even gonna. I get it, bro. If you want to say Luca, cool. I, yeah. No pushback. No pushback. For real, for real. It ain't no pushback on Jokic either. It's just the principle of like again. What what would Luca have to do for you? Um. Did either of us say SGA? Not really. Like SGA is having. Yeah, I'm about to say uh, we that got, we caliber of a season. It, it's just when it comes to who's in the com. Not to say that SGA isn't in the conversation, but what is is his case thing. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah like he, what he, he what is his you. winning case is it numbers no because that's luca is it two-way dominance sga has been good uh, uh on both ends of the court this season but there's a Giannis out there if it's winning you got boston if it's winning denver has the same record so i'm looking at sga again great season but in terms of making that case i, I just don't see it i just don't see yeah. it yeah yeah, it, it's no, and let me be clear, because while Thunder fans are one of the crayon-eating fan, fan bases that I left out in the last video, no, you're welcome to the gang. You're with the Laker fans. But, dog, it, nobody here disrespecting SGA. SGA is a hooper, and I'm the Lucas stan. I should be slandering, but I'm not. Dead ass, though, he just don't have the case that 
wins. He has a case. He has an MVP case. No shit. You get to argue jack of all trades, essentially. But, like, at that point, it's just better arguments for other players. At, at that point, as Souls already broke it down, I don't need to break it down again. I think SGA is having a fantastic season. I'm not even going to say he's overrated in terms of his um his talent, his uh production, or anything like that. But I will admit, a lot of people are going around saying SGA is the MVP. I don't see that at all. And it's not because he's not playing on MVP level. It's just because whatever you're about to argue, you argue for somebody else better. And if you're arguing, well, he's, like, checks off everything, I'm like, eh. <laughs> that, that, that's just the thing i'm like eh, yo kid are you sure so it's like ah it, he just it's just unfortunate he'll get one one day though he'll get one well ooh, actually we had a short about will he get one because of this exact scenario I think I think SGA is having like 2017 Kawhi type of season when it comes to this discussion. Like great season, might be an MVP in like 80 percent of league history. But uh, there's just some guys right now playing at guy type levels that um I'm just sorry, man. It's it's cool. It's cool. It, it's no knock on your season. You know what I'm saying? I I still think like 2012 Thunder. You know, KD didn't win the MVP that uh, uh award that season, but we look back at that season as a very special season for Thunder basketball specifically for different amount of reasons. You don't need the MVP to justify the season that you got. I think that might be a hot take that I should I should bring on the pod, but I I'll say it here too. You do not need awards to justify the greatness of whatever it is that you're doing. Talk to these niggas. Y'all need it. Y'all need it. And sometimes, and I, I think that's what y'all get caught up to with these award conversations is because y'all feel like the award is necessary to justify said season. No, we can just, hey, you having a great season. And that's it. And we will look back in history and still revere that season for the season that it was with or without that MVP. You know, so yeah, a lot of people are uh, a lot of the I don't want to I don't know what the hater fan base for the for this group is maybe the Sage Defiance. I don't know. Comment below. What's the hater hater group name? But a lot of people that don't like the messages I have on this channel in regards to not taking media so seriously or just flagrantly not knowing things but still talking basketball. I understand that frustration at its core because, you know, you want somebody that knows everything allegedly, right? But dead ass, this is one of the dumber videos we've ever done because it, in hindsight, really doesn't matter. Every nominee we've named is a fantastic player in whatever category we've named. Hell, they're just fantastic overall. It, the idea that some of you guys will be so triggered in this comment section that X player, Y player, Z player didn't win a specific award and portray that to think, hey, yo, we don't think Triple J can play defense. Yo, we, do, we don't think that um that fucking Tim Hardaway is a fantastic player off the bench. Yo, we don't think that um who, who coaching in my fucking uh, magic right now? But whoever's the Orlando coach can't think of his name right now. We we don't think he's a good coach. There's several things. And I'm like, bro, all of these nominees are fantastic. The idea that y'all need the trophy to validate things does not matter for these NBA awards that are pushed off of narratives anyway. Now, when we talk about winning a championship, dog, I mean, you have to, you know, <clears throat> win the championship. So, so sure. But those conversations are not the same as conversations as these awards. I've always said, and Souls has been a guy that advocated this as well. When we talk about these all-time players, when we talk about player versus player, all that stuff, I think there's a space for that. That's fine. But I always say MVP caliber season. I don't care who had the trophy. I care about how good you were in that year, dog. I don't care if you didn't raise the trophy for some unknown reason. Am I going to act like 22-23 Jokic was a bum because Embiid had the, had the MVP? No. It, it's weird because, like, music is the biggest award niche out there like grammys matter oscars matter and shit like that but we don't look at i don't know like what what, what was that year macklemore won oh yeah yeah when macklemore beat uh to pimp a butterfly yeah let me yeah, look we that up we right now we don't Go discredit ahead, to pimp a butterfly just because macklemore won the grammy you know what i'm saying and no one was really writing oh uh, uh, this this album gotta win the grammy it, it, it gotta win the grammy but like, bro, we, we accept art for the way that I understand it might be different because it's art versus competition. But same thing with movies, bro. Like, you do not need that Oscar to justify your, your performance or how great it was. It could still be great without that award, but. Yeah, uh, for clarity, I got the years wrong. To, to Ben Buffalo is 2015. In 2014, I know some of you guys only like hoops. Literally, Macklemore won album of the year compared to nothing was the same. Magna Carter, Jesus, and Good Kid Mad City. And no offense to Macklemore, we talk about the other four artists eternally more that's the point bro at the end of the day we're gonna look at your your discography we're gonna look at your statistics we're gonna look at your accomplishments and see what you've done but the idea that if you didn't raise that trophy that in 2014 drake wasn't him for real is insane <laughs> insane standards but 
I, I know y'all have already typed away. Y'all have already stopped after you heard it. You probably already disliked and commented below. Anybody that watched the full video, um, I don't know, type something outlandish. Type something stupid at the end of your comment. Or you better get, literally type something stupid at the end of your comment if you made it to this part of the video. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Hell, haters, let me know your thoughts as well. This has been your boy TSO Sage here with my brother Benjamin for the annual SNS Awards. Sorry we didn't uh, wear the tie. We came up this with on the fly. Take care. Stay blessed. See y'all next year.